Want to rise above what holds you back? These are the stories of those fighting that battle. It might also be the story of you. I'm Dan Waldschmidt, author of Edgy Conversations and strategist of billion dollar companies all over the world. This is Mark Menard, author of The Story of You, the guy who knows a thing or two about never giving up. You're listening to Elevating Beyond. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Elevating Beyond with a two-word mission statement, Change Lives. And as always, we're honored to have so many incredible guests, especially kicking off 2021. And I could spend the next 45 minutes of the whole show just reading our guest today's bio. You've accomplished so much. But I'm honored. We're honored to be sitting here today with Pat Williams. And just to give you a little flavor of some things he's accomplished, Pat has served for seven years in the United States Army, spent seven years in the Philadelphia Phillies organization, two as a minor league catcher and five in the front office, spent three years in the Minnesota Twins organization since 1968. He has been in the NBA as general manager for teams in Chicago, Atlanta, Philadelphia, including the 1983 world champion 76ers and now Orlando Magic, which, by the way, Pat co-founded in 1987 and helped lead to the NBA finals in 1995. Somehow, Pat, also in all your spare time, I believe it says on your bio that you've authored over 71 books, but I think I heard you mention on an interview that you actually authored over 104 books. So first of all, how are you doing today, Pat? I'm good, Mark. Thanks. Uh, Good to catch up with you and uh, thanks for the invitation here. Absolutely. It's an honor. So is that right, Pat? Have you actually authored over 100 books? Well, book number 115 has just come out. Uh, It's a book called The Reluctant Leader. And we look at uh, the lens through the lens of leadership of how reluctant many people have been and remain about stepping up and taking leadership positions when they're there to be taken or they're offered. Um, So many excuses about why I shouldn't step up and be a leader. So it's a little a little different look at leadership, but it's just out uh, up on Amazon. Good way to order it. The Reluctant Leader. It's uh, it's my, the latest. Then we've got another book coming in May called Revolutionary Leadership, and we look at the uh, the leadership uh, that we got during that Revolutionary War period from so many different people. Mm. Many of them many of them famous. Many of them not. Uh, but they, their leadership skills uh, allowed our nation to be birthed. So that book will be out um, in in May. And, and Pat, this is the, the so much the core, and I'm so excited to talk to you about all this because leadership, it, w- with me building my company from the ground up and then getting to the point where now um, over 14 years, I have 20 team members. We, we have a company for individuals with developmental disabilities, um, as well as running the show and some books and stuff too. Definitely not 115 yet, but uh, man, you've raised the bar high to go after that. But honestly, Pat, it wasn't until, and, and as, as you know, of course, but I, I really started diving deep into leadership like leaders aren't born they're built and i really had so much to learn about serving leadership and how applying that and and teaching that and living that with my team has been honestly a a game changer and i work with so many different businesses and entrepreneurs and and i really talk to them you know until you really learn to focus on this thing called leadership, you're never going to go, you're only going to go so far, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, or 
in your experience, Pat, I'm, I'm really curious how you saw that applying with running organizations like and founding organizations such as the Orlando Magic and different NBA teams. Um, well, everything rises and falls on leadership. Uh, it always has. It always will. It will always be a topic of, of great interest and intense interest here in our country. And um, I'm glad to see that you're really uh, taking this leadership thing uh, seriously and that you're excited about it. And um, I'm sure we can uh, uh, hopefully make some points here that will help people. Yeah, I, I saw you speak one of your speaking clips on your on your website too, Pat, where you were speaking at the West Point um, Military Academy, and I believe that was also speaking from your book, Character Carved in Stone, and just so many of the different principles that that you were talking about are are what we live and and what we apply to, and I, I just want people listening to understand from you because sometimes people can think differently and be like, well, yeah, but those same things that, that apply at, at the military Academy, well, that couldn't apply to running an NBA team or that wouldn't apply to my company, but what are some of those main core things that, that you really have learned and, you know, and, and maybe a time, you could share when, when you didn't know much about leadership and kind of what got you to really take such an interest in leadership in your life and how that changed your life. Well, it probably <clears throat> was the move here to Orlando uh, in 1986. And uh, we, I came here to help start the magic up as an expansion team. And uh, Orlando at that point was really beginning to grow as a um, convention city and uh, continued to grow and continues to grow, by the way. But anyway, there were so many conventions and business meetings taking place here. And I began to get invitations to speak to these, to the, some of these groups. And the, the number one topic they wanted was uh, a, a discussion on leadership. And I'd been in leadership positions throughout my entire sports career, but I didn't really uh, feel comfortable or qualified to speak about it because I just had not really uh, honed in on it. You know, I just hadn't really studied it, but uh, I was doing it, but I wasn't equipped to share specifically with groups. So that forced me to do some uh, intense research and uh, really get this thing organized. And, uh, in that process, uh, I discovered that uh, leadership consists of seven key components, seven key ingredients. And as I began to study the great leaders of history, as I began to, to watch leaders in action, as I began to listen to the great leaders of history, I came away convinced that these seven qualities were available to all of us. So that allowed me to build a, uh, a, a talk, a consistent talk that I could use. Uh, it changed because there were always new stories, uh, yeah. new anecdotes, um, and new illustrations that I could use. Uh, but the meat of it was the seven sides of uh, effective leadership. So I, 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 taught, I called the talk Leadership Excellence. Uh, what does it take to be a leader of excellence? So that's that's the background. So, Pat, but you mentioned too, which I think is a very important thing, is you studied it, but also you, you were living it because, you know, to, to be a founder of an NBA team, it, you can't build and grow these things without applying some of these principles of leadership, you know, maybe, maybe you were, you were already even doing some of them without even being consciously aware of it. Did you, did you notice any of that as you studied any of the principles and are any that really jump out at you as kind of, Oh, this, this is something that I was doing 
when I was running the team that, that I was seeing that was working really well? Well, there was no question. I was in the middle of the biggest challenge I'd ever faced in my sports career. And that was trying to rally this community uh, to get excited about the potential of becoming a, a major league sports city, being having an NBA franchise. Then we had to uh, go uh, rally the, the NBA owners. We had to get the commissioner's office sold. Uh, so many uh, areas that we had to, uh, to get accomplished. So, yes, I was doing it. Uh, but, but then I, uh, it was reflecting it at the same time and, and figuring out what it is that I, I was doing and what, uh, what the great leaders of history have done. So I got very excited that I found a, an absolute pattern, uh, of great leaders. Uh, the, the seven principles, uh, were absolutely there, uh, with every one of them. And so my, my speech would end up with a challenge uh, that you can walk out of this room uh, knowing what it takes to be a, 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 a great leader. You, you, your leadership skills can improve the minute you walk out of here. Uh, you just have to be aware and conscious, thinking constantly about how am I doing today with these seven sides? How am I? improving how am i being how can i be more effective i i would always give them a challenge that they could put shoe leather uh, to their leadership right away pat was named as one of the 50 most influential people in nba history so i i think first of all it's an honor to be to have you here on on the show elevating beyond but one thing that I really talk about with leadership is this thing called humility. And, and I can just tell from, from talking to you, Pat, that the humility comes before honor because there's so, I, I mean, everyone listening to this show, I, there's 10 more pages I, I could be reading on of other accomplishments that Pat has done. I'm, I'm really not joking. And you, you know, you kind of just glaze over it. You're like, yeah, we, we got some, some things together and had to work hard to start an NBA team. <laughs> but th those are huge, huge accomplishments that you you've really had that thing that you mentioned that hard work like putting in the hard work, I think is, is such an important thing that everyone listening to today, because some people could, could see you, Pat. I, I know the, the way younger version of me, the, the very stupid and ignorant one would be like, yeah, but, but people like Pat must have just been, been born into it and just inherited the money to, to be able to just buy an NBA team and, and co-found uh, the Orlando Magic. And, and it must be nice for them, but it's not true. It, it, that hard work, Pat, just, just talk about the correlation you see between with yourself and other examples of just great NBA players or, or coaches or owners that you've personally known where you've seen that hard work works. Mark, what, I, 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 what I'm going to do is, is give you an outline, because I've mentioned it a time or two, uh, about the seven key ingredients it takes to be a top-level leader. Okay. And, I, and I'm going to do, do it in the form of a poem. Uh, seven things one must do to be a leader right and true. Have vision that is strong and clear, communicate so they can hear, have people skills based in love and character that's far above, the competence to solve and teach and boldness that has fearless reach, a serving heart that stands close by to help, assist, and edify. 
Now, the, the, now those uh, those are the seven sides: vision, communication, people skills, character, competence, boldness, and a serving heart mentality. And 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 that allows Amen. a leader every and that allows a leader every day uh, to to examine. Uh, how am I doing in, in this area? Am I a little weak here? Uh, have I been uh, not paying enough attention in this area? Now, under each of those seven key points, uh, there are sub points uh, that that we've li- that I've listed. And uh, for example, uh, under the area of vision, and, and every every leader of great note is a visionary. Uh, they see the future before it gets here. Uh, they see farther down the road than others. Uh, they see things that the rest of us don't see. If you can't see it before you see it, you'll never be able to see it. That's right. And 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 so so when you have a vision as a leader, number one, it keeps you focused. Number two, it keeps you fueled. And number three, it helps you finish. And so leadership starts with a vision. <clears throat> but secondly, if you can't communicate your vision well, effectively, uh, nothing's going to happen to that vision. That's right. You, you, you can have the, uh, the greatest exciting vision in the world, but... If uh, if your communication skills are weak and ineffective, that vision is just going to die. Right. Uh, the third thing we talked about were people skills. Great leaders uh, care about people. They have a heart for people. They are interested in people, not just what people can produce for them, mm. but the, but the but the whole person. Um, they call it empathy. Call it love. Uh, but great leaders have outstanding people skills. Uh, they're curious about people. They want to learn about people. Uh, they want to dig into people's lives and, 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 and be a difference maker. Uh, th- th- that's what I've learned about the best leaders. And, and, and the best leaders have a few consistent people skills. Number one, they're visible and available to people. Right. Uh, secondly, they listen to people. Thirdly, they empower people. Mm. They build them up. Uh, they, they're, they're encouraging to people. And, and fourthly, um, uh, the best leaders are the best delegators. Yes. Who get people involved, who get people um, doing important things, uh, get people excited uh, because they're, they're, they're team members, they're participants. Right. And, and, and it's, thir- oh, go ahead, Pat. The fourth, thing, the fourth thing we talked about, Mark, was character. Character counts in leadership. Yes, yes, and, yes. And that, that means honesty and integrity. It means personal responsibility. It means hard work. There we go. Uh, the, the leader should be the hardest worker on the team. Yes. Uh, it means perseverance through tough times. And leadership is not a waltz. It's not a, it's not a dance. It's hard. It's, it's persevering through the tough times that are always out there for leaders. Leadership is not easy. No. no. So, you know, so, yes. so we, leadership starts with vision, then comes communication, and then comes people skills, then comes character. And the fifth ingredient is called competence. Leaders are good at what they do. And that begs the question, how did they get good? Born or made? Born or made? What do you think? 
Well, both. The answer is both. Every leader I've been aware of was boring. And, and they were Bill, all boring. Right. right. Well, right. And were, right. And, and they were all developed. So I think, uh, you know, when that kind of question comes up, I, I kind of poke fun. Every leader I know was born. Uh, <laughs> I guess you're right. Yeah, so, you can't argue that. So are, there, <laughs> so are there born leaders? Yeah, the whole world of them. Uh, but they all had to be developed. Right. They all had to uh, keep working to get better. So what are the uh, competencies of key leaders? Uh, number one, solving problems. Anybody can lead in the good times. But when the problems hit, that's when the real leaders step up. Uh, second competency is uh, called simply called selling. Leaders are always selling. Some issue, some concept, some new idea, they're always selling. Mm. Uh, here, here's the next uh, competency. Uh, it's the competency of spotting talent and putting a team together. Uh, great leaders are always l looking out for uh, a potential uh, uh, people they can bring aboard who have special mm -hmm. skills or good talent. Uh, and then they know how to take those people and get them aligned so that they become an effective team. Uh, that's a real gift. That's, that's, that's a, that's a talent that, that great leaders have, have learned to develop. Right. I don't think it's automatic, uh, but, but great leaders are, are good talent observers and they know how to take talent and make it work together and make an organization hum. Can I ask you a quick question one, on that, Pat, real quick on that uh, talent part? Mm -hmm. If you don't um one other part of that too is also which which I know I have learned the hard way, but then really the importance of it is not only getting the right people on on your team that really and then that really match all your core values, but also getting the wrong people off your team, which, which actually, you know, I learned the lesson. Um, my good man, Dave Ramsey taught me that you're also serving your team by firing people off your team that are bringing the whole team down. Y you know what I mean? Cause a lot of times people don't talk about that other side of developing and spotting the talent and growing your team is also weeding out the people that are, infecting your whole team and, and dividing well, Mark, the let me, unity. Let me, let me, let me uh, make a couple of observations here. Uh, number one, uh, hire very slowly. Uh, don't rush when, when you're hiring people or need to hire someone. Uh, do the, the thorough examination of that person. Uh, you could never do enough background tests. Yes. You can never do enough psychological testing. Uh, you can never do enough interviewing. Uh, you can have never have enough people um, uh, helping you observe and study and examining. Hire very slowly. Organizations get in trouble when they hire too fast. Uh, we've got a so spot true. open. We've got an empty empty office. We got a desk here. We need to fill it and. And, and they move so f too fast and many times it doesn't work uh, because they weren't thorough enough. Yeah. Uh, and then, on the, and then, and then secondly, uh, dismiss quickly. Yeah. If, if you've got a, si yes. if you've got a situation that, that is just is not working and you've tried everything you can to make it work and you've given that person every opportunity but it just isn't working. Uh, you're better off doing uh, now what you're going to have to do eventually and, and, right. and, and make the decision. It's never easy. It's never pleasant uh, to let uh, people go. It just is very uncomfortable. Yeah. And, 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 and nobody likes to do it. 
but uh, in many cases, it needs to be done for the health of your organization and uh, for the for the future of that person, right? Uh, who who so may, be, may be stump, stumbling along in your organization, just not working out, uh, and they're better off uh, being somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, so that that th- those are a couple of quick observations. So now, uh, Mark, we we've we've established that leadership begins with vision, and then comes the importance of communicating your vision. And then come people skills, then come character counts. Uh, Fifthly, uh, great leaders are competent. Uh, The sixth thing that we need to talk about, uh, outstanding leaders have a certain boldness to them. Uh, They have have courage. Right. Um, You see, decisions have to be made in any organization. And when decisions get postponed or delayed or dragged out, uh, organizations are really not flourishing. No. And that's why why, um, uh, I talk about the importance of of boldness and leadership, stepping up and and, uh, deciding, making decisions. Uh, I remember when George W. W. Bush was in the White House and uh, I, I can still hear his voice. I'm the decider. Uh, I decide what's right. I decide what we have to do here. Well, every organization must have a decider. Yeah. Uh, some man or woman who, when it, when it gets right down to it, is the one who makes that key decision. And and that requires courage. I mean, it's not yes. easy. Uh, but boldness in leadership, not baldness, by the way, but boldness, <laughs> um, uh, bold, bold leadership. I, I have found in my study of human beings, uh, and when we st- start studying success, every successful person that I've ever studied or, or, or been around was a risk taker. Right. And and they went they went uh, about life with with real boldness. They took risks. They 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 fought through their fears. Uh, they they knew how to deal with change. Uh, because when you try to change something, you upset everybody. Right. Uh, right. You know, everybody fights change. Yes. Uh, and, and so the, the the most successful people I've I've observed were were, were risk takers and uh, went when it when it attacked life with boldness, uh, dealt with change, fought through their fears. Uh, there's there there's a common theme, uh, you know, with successful people. So then, Mark, we we come to the final point I want to make with you about uh, leadership excellence. Uh, quality number seven is simply called a serving heart. Uh, when you have a serving hearted leader, uh, you're, you're blessed to be around that person. Uh, serving hearted leaders mindset is simply, it's not about me, right? It's always about you. It's not about building my resume. It's about building yours. It's not about my personal success. It's about the success of you all and this company. Right. Uh, and that, that that's what drives. That's what drives a serving-hearted leader. And uh, and and when you uh, when you're you're fortunate enough to to be working with a serving-hearted leader, uh, you are extremely fortunate. Right. They're out there. They're they're not. They're there. I wish we had more of them. Right. But the, uh, but the but good ones are that, out there. The the one the places that are really winning, um, like like the owners of Chick Fil A, that that I've had the honor of meeting. You know, are they they all share and are living these exact principles that you're talking about, and and, and it's not by coincidence. You know, they they are people kind of misconstrue and and think that they're not out there and there definitely needs to be more of them. 
but um, yeah, go go ahead, Pat. Well, that's that's a great point. Uh, the uh, Kathy family with Chick Fil A, the Green family with Hobby Lobby, and there are many others uh, where they practice these principles. But but uh, most importantly, uh, they follow the model of Jesus, yes. uh, who was the, the the greatest serving hearted leader the world's ever seen. We we've got other examples of serving hearted leaders. Uh, but but the, the, the uh, companies that I, I most admire uh, are put a put a strong emphasis on uh, serving the the importance of serving others. Yeah. Uh, and and if you and if and if you do that, uh, you're going to see amazing results uh, with your company. So let's let's just go over it again. Seven things one must do to be a leader, right and true. Have vision that is strong and clear. Communicate so they can hear. Have people skills based in love. And character that's far above. The competence to solve and teach. And boldness that has fearless reach. A serving heart that stands close by to help, assist, and edify. Pat, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm in my head. I'm saying amen to everything after you're saying, because it's so refreshing to sit down with someone and, and hear you speak of these, these things that are, are so just pivotal to everything I do in my, in my life and in my company and with everyone I meet that's really doing things the right way. I just have so much, I, I, I'm just so, I'm really passionate about leadership be, when it's done the right way with a serving mindset. And, and there's different levels to it too. And something I didn't mention in your bio, Pat, is to top it off, you and your lovely wife, Ruth, are the parents of, listen up here, ladies and gentlemen, 19 children, including 14 adopted from four nations um, at the time this was written, ranging in age from 24 to 37. Now, Pat, I, I have five kids and, and we adopted our nephew and I act like we've done a lot with that. And then I, I see this, <clears throat> that takes serving to a whole other level how much were you tested in those in those teen years i can imagine that you had multiple teen how many teenagers did you have at the same time well there was one year when 16 of the kids were were all teenagers at the same time uh fortunately they they're all now in their 30s and 40s uh and they okay. all have their own lives they they all have their own families we have 19 grandchildren that were uh, we're very interested in. That's and uh, so that, that's, that's been a whole other adventure. I learned <laughs> a lot about leadership, just, uh, just raising that brood of children. Right. And uh, so, so leadership is, is, is in many different uh, facets of our life. You know, if you're a father, you're a leader. If you're a mother, you're a leader. Right. If you're grandparents, well, then you're leaders as well. Uh, you might be leading in your church. You might be leading in your company. You might be leading in youth sports activities. Uh, you might be leading uh, some area in your community. Um, uh, you might be leading in, a, in an area of, of volunteering. We, we all of us may wear many leadership hats. Right. Uh, e even though we may not think of ourselves every day as a leader, but uh, we are. Right. And, so uh, and, and I think the, the seven qualities, uh, will, will, uh, allow us to, uh, have, have a, a plumb line, a, a checkpoint, uh, where we can really examine how we're doing every day as a leader. Yeah. And, and would you say Pat too, you know, something that you mentioned the importance of, of courage and making decisions, but also how that, ties in because you mentioned leadership it, it's not easy and that ties in with the accountability piece of I, i'm making 
the decision. I'm taking action based on what I have. Nothing's ever a hundred percent. There's no perfect way to know anything. There's no such thing as perfect conditions and also being accountable for crap that that was the wrong decision. But guess what? As the leader, I, I take full accountability for that. I don't, you know, real leaders don't start pointing fingers and blaming them. They, they take accountability and they figure out, okay, how do we pivot and how do we adjust from this? And, and are you, well, go ahead, Pat. Mark, let me take you back uh, to that area called character, which we discussed. And I made mention of the fact that uh, uh, character leaders, number one, are honest. They have integrity. Thirdly, uh, they take responsibility. In other words, their attitude is this was done well, and I did it. This was done poorly, and I did it. Right. But in, e- but in either case, I'm responsible. And I'm, I'm not going to uh, be blaming others. I'm not going to be pointing fingers. I'm not going to develop a case of instant amnesia if this thing doesn't work out. Uh, I'm the responsible person here. Uh, that, that's, that's what I've learned about the best leaders. And that's why if, if, if a leader takes responsibility, uh, people will follow them anywhere. That's right. Uh, bec- because they know the top person is, um, is a stand up person. Right. Uh, he, he, he or she is not going to start blaming others if everything goes wrong. So uh, that, 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 that's where that tucks in. So I think, Mark, uh, uh, one thing I failed to touch on in the area of competence. Yes. Uh, I, I talked about the competence of spotting talent and building teams, and then there was one more point to make, and that is uh, the best leaders are competent at teaching. Uh, in many ways, leadership really is teaching. Uh, you're, you're constantly teaching people right. uh, under, under, your, under your supervision. Uh, you're, you're, you're teaching them, and you need to be a lifelong teacher. That's right. And you, can't, and you can't be a lifelong teacher unless you're a lifelong learner. So true. Uh, John, F., John F. Kennedy years ago said, learning and leadership are indispensable to each other. And, and so how do you become a lifelong learner? Let's, let's close on this point. Uh, number one, you uh, uh, continue your formal education. If you have failed, perhaps, to go complete your master's work, go, go do it. Get it done. Mm. Uh, you can do it. You don't have to go sit on a campus. Uh, through distance learning, you can get it done. Secondly, to be a lifelong learner, hang with the smartest people you can find. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can call them mentors. You can call them life coaches. I don't care what you call them. Right. Uh, but you want to hang with the smartest people you can and learn from them and, and uh, take from them and study them and question them. And then the third way to be a lifelong learner is to be a lifelong reader of, of good books Uh, Harry Truman, the president put it this way. He said, not all readers will be leaders, but all leaders must be readers. Right. And so, so I always challenge leaders, uh, with questions. What, what are you reading these days? Uh, tell me a book that that, that recently that left an impact on you. Um, what's the next, what's the next book you've got waiting uh, when you finish this one, uh, how, how often do you uh, browse around uh, uh, Barnes and Noble? When was the last time you were in a books a million? Um, I'm, I'm constantly encouraging leaders to be serious about their reading habits. Uh, if you'll read an hour a day, for example, at the end of one week, you'll have finished a book. Yeah. A, a regular size book. Yeah. And if you do, if you keep that up for a year, that's fifty two books. Um, most people, particularly men, uh, are not readers, unfortunately. Mm. And I encourage them to 
to really take that issue to heart. Uh, you can find that hour a day. It doesn't have to be yep, one solid right. hour. Uh, you can find time at, at lunch. You can find time in your commute, perhaps. Uh, you, you can, can listen find to an audio book while you're driving, even. Yeah, that's a that's a, a good way. I love to hold a book in my hand. I like the real book. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I always, I always have a pen in hand. You know, if you come across a key quote or story, save it. Uh, fold the page down. Come back and Xerox it out of there so you've got it saved. Uh, so that that's a point that I uh, failed to mention as we were going through it, but that would that would come under the area of competence, the competence of teaching, and the competence of being a, a lifelong learner. So I think we I think Mark, we've covered things pretty thoroughly on what I've learned about leadership. Absolutely, Pat, and of course, everyone listening. You, 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 we're just barely touching it. You you want to learn way way more? Check out Pat's Pat's books and his the the one that I recently started reading before the character carved in stone, but also your most recent release that just came out, which you mentioned is is on Amazon, and and we'll put the link to it all in the show notes. And that's an example. Listen, everyone listening, I'm all about learning from people that have actually done what they're teaching. And, and Pat, you're a, a pure example of that on so many different levels. And w- one thing I just want to mention before we end the show too, you, you mentioned connecting with mentors and stuff. And I think it's important people know, because sometimes people listening are like, well, well, I don't have the same connections that, that you have, Mark, or that Pat has, but it, it doesn't, you're at different levels at life and your mentors don't have to be people that are alive. It could be reading just as you mentioned, Pat, or I saw that you study the, you're a big civil war buff. And so is my dad. There's great leadership lessons you can learn. I, I read the biography also of, of Walt Disney and, and learned so much about how he led and the Disney leadership style that took off from that. So, you know, your mentors and such don't necessarily have to be people that are alive. You can be learning through them from works that they've left. And I look at that as another example of serving leadership is by what you leave behind. And Pat, you certainly, and and you're not done yet. So can you please mention the name one more time of your most current book that's out there that people can grab right now on Amazon? Well, The Reluctant Leader has just come out uh, this month. Uh, we've got another book coming in May called Revolutionary Leadership. Uh, you mentioned a book that I did about a year ago. It, it's called Character Carved in Stone. And it's about an experience I had at West Point. And then there's another book that came out about a year ago called Lead Like Walt. Yeah, uh, and, and I, it's the third book I've written about Walt Disney. But th- this looks at Walt. Uh, through the the narrow lens of leadership, what was it about Walt Disney uh, that made him such an effective leader uh, that his company uh, still thrives decades after he left this, after he passed away? Yes. And I'd, I'd mention one other book to check out uh, that came out two years ago. It's called Leading God's Way. Nice. And, and we look at uh, some of the outstanding leaders in the Bible and, um, and, and write about uh, their most effective leadership skill. So when you go up to Amazon, uh, those are a few things to check out. Thank, thank you so much, Pat. It, it's, it's been beyond an honor, and I, I can't think of a greater time right now that people really need to be absorbing this message. And, you know, as, as you're looking around and, and people can start complaining that, oh, there's no good leaders out there. Who's going to rescue me? Look in the mirror at yourself. And you 
are the leader that you've been looking for. You are the one that can learn these things and be the change that you want to see. So listen, everyone, go check out all Pat's books, his speaking, all the different businesses listening. You can hire Pat for different speaking events. I'll have the link to his website. And this thing called leadership is a game changer. It's a life changer and it's a lifelong journey. So never settle, never give up and keep elevating beyond.